having a great knife skills are essential in the kitchen and to becoming a better cook. It is the basis of everything that you do in the kitchen. It's a skill that you will be using every time you work in your kitchen. Having the right knife skills and know-how to create cuts such as Brunoa, Julienne, or Chiffonade will help you improve your knife cutting skills. Not only that, but also to improve the visual appeal and professionalism of the food you cook. Okay, first things first. Before you even start chopping, you have to make sure that your chopping board is secured. Place it in a steady position. Here is a tip I could give you to prevent your chopping board from slipping or shaking. Place a damp cloth underneath your chopping board, and this way it will make your chopping board steady. Here are some important things that you should remember. Make sure you're gripping your knife properly. You need to put your thumb and index finger at the very back of the knife and wrap your fingers around the handle to firmly grip it. This way it will give you a good control of the knife. It may be uncomfortable at first but in time you'll get used to it. Sharpen your knife and make sure it's free of dents as this may result to uneven cuts. Now for the positioning of the other hand. One common mistake is the hand is laid flat, which makes it dangerous because you might get your fingers cut. Proper positioning is to form your fingers in a claw position. This way your fingers will go in and the knife will touch your knuckles as you are chopping. With this claw position your fingers are protected the whole time while chopping. Another common mistake is the slicing motion. Some chops aggressively that results to uneven cuts and may even cause accidents. The proper way is to move your knife in a rocking motion like this, going back and forth with the knife, starting from the tip to the back of the knife like a wave. So now that you know how to hold your knife, we're going to start with the common vegetable cuts you see on recipes. First is the baton. Form the carrots into a rectangular shape and start cutting the carrots horizontally and remember to position your fingers in a claw position while cutting the carrots. Also, remember to properly grip your knife. Similar to the size of a regular pen. There you go, your baton cut should look like this. Next cut is Julienne. This type of cut is similar to matchsticks. Same procedure you did with baton. Starting from a rectangular shape, make sure that the sides are evenly cut to make your Julienne in uniform sizes. Start cutting the carrots into thin sheets like this. Again, the same position of your fingers and proper gripping of your knife. Stack up the carrot sheets, then gently and skillfully glide your knife that your cut should look like this. Okay, next stop is Brunois. To do a Brunois cut, the vegetable must first be cut in julienne, then turn a quarter and dice again to create approximately 1/8 inch cubes. This cutting technique is ideal for carrots, onions, leeks, and celery, but can also be used with bell peppers and hard root vegetables like 
beets and turnips. And look at those cuts, it's gorgeous. Okay, we're done with the brunoa. Let's move on to our next cut. This is the chiffonade cut. The chiffonade method is best for cutting herbs into long ribbons. Stack fresh basil or mint leaves, roll them up tight and cut across. Hamburger style. And voila! Look at those gorgeous cuts. This technique also works well for leafy greens like spinach, collards, and kale. Next cut is to create cube. Starting from baton cut, cut the carrot into square shape and in uniform sizes for even cooking. Using a more precise method than chopping, cube ingredients are cut to a uniform size. This cut is used with many foods from potatoes to meats to bread. Next cut is dice. Generally smaller than a standard cube, the dice cut also creates uniform squares for even cooking and polished look. Dicing is often used to make a classic salsa or mirepoix. A mixture of carrots, onions, and celery. There you go. Another common term we see on recipes is mince. We regularly do this cut with garlics and onions at home for in mince ingredients are cut very very finely. Mincing is the ideal cutting technique for aromatics like onion, garlic, and ginger, where a paste like consistency is desirable and resolved. Rocking your knife in this motion? This is how your mince would look like. Gorgeous! And finally, slice. Slicing is a general term that means to cut across the grain into thin, uniform pieces. Almost every food or vegetable can be sliced, as well as other ingredients like cheese and bread. Here, let's grab a piece of carrot and remember to position your fingers in a claw position and gently glide your knife. And there you go your thinly sliced carrots. Knife skills are one of the most important competencies that I believe everybody should learn. It is particularly important to have a good understanding of knife skills to help ensure safety in the kitchen and the best final result. In addition to strong knife skills, it is important to have a good quality knife. Having good sharp knives is paramount to success in the kitchen as it will not only contribute to keeping you safe but it will also save you time in the kitchen. A good quality knife is one for which it is easy to restore the sharp edge and is a good size and weight for the user. Now that you know to proper hold and use your knife, I'm sure you will be excited to work in your kitchen. Practice makes perfect. Do it slowly and make sure in proper form. Gradually, you will become as good as professional cook. So what are you waiting for? Grab your knife and chopping board and start practicing. But wait! Remember to give extra care in handling your knife that you might cut your fingers which we don't want to happen. Just do it slowly. <laughs>